Preparation, preparation, preparation. A wise man once said, a minute's preparation is worth an hour's toil. Let's talk templates. Hi, welcome to the Quakes Motel. My name's Conan, and in this video, we're gonna be discussing templates. Now, when I first started mixing in the 80s, we'd always have the desk set up in exactly the same way. We'd have the kicks on channel one, into the snares, into the hi-hats, into the percussion, uh, the bass would always be on channel 10, uh, guitars, synths, uh, piano, strings, horns. The vocals would always be on channel 17 because it was the only channel that didn't have static on it when you moved the fader and we were riding the fader a lot in those days. Basically, we had a template. And what I didn't realise is that this is the forerunner of the templates that we use every single day now in our DAWs. And nowadays we can have templates for different genres, different situations, one for mastering, one for mixing, one with different effects chains, ones with different gain settings, you get the picture. And so in this video, I wanna run through my template and run through some of the reasons why I have my template set up this way. So here we are in Studio One. Now obviously if you're in a different DAW, the way that you set up your templates will be slightly different, the routing will be slightly different, but the concept will be exactly the same. Now starting off with the drums folder, let me, let me just move the mixer out of the way. Right, so with the drums folder, I have a couple of kick channels. They'll be in mono, but I can change them to stereo if I want to, but generally my kicks will be in mono, so I have mono channels set up. Low percussion will be snares, claps, tom-toms, anything where the fundamental is below 1000 hertz, that kind of thing. Uh, high percussion will be hi-hats, cymbals. Stereo drums will be overheads, but also with electronic drums and hip-hop, that kind of thing where there aren't overheads, I sometimes like to create my own ambient channel um, just to make it sound a bit more organic, so they will go on those channels. Stereo percussion will be exactly that. It's congas, bongos, shakers, tambourines, and obviously um, I might have a mono percussion as well, but generally percussion I'd have in stereo. Moving on to the bass folder, I'll have a mono bass and stereo bass set up. I can increase the amount of tracks in there, but that'll be electric bass, acoustic bass, synth basses, but I'll keep them all in the bass folder. Moving on to guitars, I have a couple of channels for mono guitars and stereo guitars and then the synths and keys. So that'll be mono low, mono high, stereo low, stereo high, so that'd be different kinds of synths, you know, whether they're lead synths or not, not uh, necessarily bass synths, but you know, sort of synths in a lower key. Mono piano and stereo piano, so that'd be things like Rhodes, organs, acoustic piano, that kind of thing. Um, I probably would put something like Mellotrons and stuff like that on there as well. Horns, speaks for itself, horns mono, horns stereo. That would normally increase, I'd imagine, if I've got a whole brass section, different channels, etc. And then moving on to sample. Now, sample will be uh, if I'm using loops or samples. Also, that's where I start with my mixes. I would drag all of my files into the sample folder and then I'll drag and drop them into the tracks or the folders that they need to be in. And then effects and fills, which will be uh, ambiences, risers, that kind of thing. So let me get to the vocals. Now the way I have the vocals set up is I have the compressors already in place and they're in bypass and basically I can choose which compressor I want to use on the vocal and I can just flick it in and out. I can try out different compressors like for instance I have the Fairchild, the Distressor, the 1176, the Neve 33609 and the Gates. Now these change but these are the compressors which I'm really into at the moment and I like using on voices. Now the way that I've got this routed is they're, all, they're also routed to the vocal bus and so I can bring in any of these compressors in parallel. I can have more than one compressor, I can blend all five compressors together, or I can just use one compressor, but they're there in parallel. And, and it's kind of based around a, a technique that a mix engineer called Michael Brower uses, and he, he uses a lot of parallel compression in his mixes. So that's, kind of, that's where I got that from. It's, it's not really my idea, I was inspired by that, and I know a lot of engineers use that. And it's kind of like how I would have had it in the old days where I had a bunch of compressors in a rack and I would have a patch bay and I would patch into each one of these different compressors and try them out with the vocals. But here I've already got them set up and I just have to take them out of bypass and I can try them out. Then underneath that I'll have the mono vocal and the stereo BVs. These are not routed through the compressors but obviously it's very easy to route them through the compressors if I want to. But they will generally be for uh, harmony or backing vocals that won't need as much processing. They might just need some tuning work, some editing, uh, maybe one compressor or maybe two compressors stacked. And then I always have new track there. It's just a spare track. 
It just sits there. Sometimes a rough mix will get dragged onto that or so I just want to bounce something quickly and I'll put it on the new track. It's just there as its own track, completely disconnected from everything else. It still goes through the mix bus, but it, it, it won't be actually kind of, I won't, it's not something I'm going to use in the mix. Then at the bottom, I have the effects channels. Again, I don't actually have uh, the effect on there, but you know, I have it set up in such a way that I'll have reverbs, I'll have a delay and I'll have parallel compression. That sometimes changes depending on what the mix is. If I bring up the mix here, you can see in these effects channels, I already have an EQ set up, which will basically take off the bottom end and take off the top end, especially for the reverbs. I don't think the delay has any of the EQ set up and the parallel compression won't, but the EQ is there already for me to be able to do any EQ that I might need to do um, to clean up reverbs or delays. So now we've finished with the channels, we move on to the buses. Now the main channel just here has my metering on it. Uh, so I have a VU meter, old school. I have my reference. Uh, plugin from Plugin Alliance, which is amazing. Can't live without that. Uh, and next to that, I have my listen bus. Now, I don't know if all DAWs have this, but Studio One has it, and it's absolutely amazing. It doesn't affect the mix. Anything I put on there won't be bounced or printed in any way. Uh, so on here, I have correction for my headphones, like Sonarworks, Can Opener. Now, I mix and master exclusively in headphones, and I have for three years now. I don't use any of these to make critical decisions. What I use them for is in the same way that when you're in a studio and you're working on monitors, you'll switch between different monitors. So I'll put Sonarworks on to uh, correct the EQ. Uh, can opener uh, creates crossfeed, so it's like sitting in a room. I might have some of the Waves NX stuff, some of the acoustic audio, the Sienna, and it just gives me a chance to just cr just sit in a sit in an environment and hear what it would sound like on speakers but obviously when I'm on the move or I'm in a hotel room or I'm in my studio I don't use monitors I use headphones exclusively so they're useful just to flick in and out when I need them and they won't be printed so if I forget to turn it off for some reason which has happened when I bounce a track it won't be printed and then moving on to the actual buses we have the master bus which goes straight to the main and my mix bus goes to my master bus I don't you don't really have to do that you can just have one master bus but I like to have a mix bus into a master bus. It's just how I've always worked. And then these individual buses will go to the mix bus. Now, obviously you can see they're set up in the same order that my individual tracks are set up. So we have the drum folder where I have a kicks bus, a low perk, a high perk, and a percussion bus, and they all go to my drums bus. Then I have a bass bus, a guitars bus, moving on to the low synth, high synth, pianos, and they all go to one key bus, which then goes to the mix bus. Horns, effects, sample, they have their own bus going to the mix bus. And then vocals and BVs are the same. And then I have these effects buses at the end here, and these will be for send effects for the buses. For instance, if I want reverb on all of the vocals, I will put that here, or delay on all of the effects and fills, I'll put that here. And then I have a bus here for parallel compression, if I want to do anything like rear bus techniques or anything like that. And that is how I have my template set up. Now obviously it's very fluid, I refine it all the time. I might change what effects I have on the vocals, the compressors might change. I might have some different buses, I might have different effect sends, but it's fluid, it changes, I refine it. But it cuts off so much time in my mixes because basically everything's in place. I don't have to color code, I don't have to set up effects returns, I don't have to set, set up buses. It's just all there and I literally drag and drop the files in and I can start mixing. So what I want to do now, just to show you how useful it is having a template, I'm going to take a mix that I was sent yesterday and I'm just going to get it all in place really, really quickly and show you how quickly you can put yourself in a position where you can actually start mixing and you've not had to set up channels and effects returns, etc. So as you can see, I've dragged the files in and I'm going to do this live without any cuts so you can see just how quickly you can be ready to mix if you have a template already set up. Okay, so let's start. This is the reference track, so I will take that down to new track. Let's just make that smaller so it's easier for me to do. Okay, Vox will go on the stereo Vox piano, stereo piano, pads, high synth, main drums. I've worked with this guy before and I know main drums mean snares. Uh, kick, take up to the top to where the kick is. High drums is obviously the hi-hats. Effects will go down here on my effects channel and bass. It's a stereo bass, uh, but what I will now do is 
I want that to be in mono, so I'll drag that onto a mono and bounce it in mono. So there we go, that's now in mono. And I'll do the same with the kick as well. Uh, make that mono and bounce that in mono. And basically, now I'm ready to mix. So I'll just hide the tracks that I'm not using. Which is these, this. Don't need the stereo bass, don't need any of the guitars, don't need this, don't need that, all that. None of the horns, none of the sample, and I don't need these. And there you go, I'm ready to mix. And that's how quick you can set yourself up if you have a template in place. And it just takes so much time off and you don't have to think and it doesn't like ruin your vibe. You get in, you want to start work, oh, but you have to set up all these channels and buses and effect sends and the routing's not right. This is in place already. I just open the song, drag the files in, put them on the right channels, done. So that's my template. Now, obviously my template's not gonna work for everybody, but I hope there's some inspiration in there. And I hope that most importantly, I've shown that having a template in place can speed up your workflow and just really cut out all the boring stuff that you normally have to do at the start of a mix down. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing and mastering tutorials and reviews. This is the Crates Motel. I'm Conan, until next time.